guys how is everybody I am in my office today as you can see but I'm actually sitting at my desk for a change um, I have had back-to-back -back calls coaching calls all day today and uh, so I wanted to make some time because there was a common thread amongst all of the conversations that I've had today about um, about happiness and what that looks like what that means to different people and hey Gillette what's going on how are you um, so as you guys come in I want to I want you to feel free to share the video out invite some people into the conversation it's time for truth talks and as many of you know truth talks is really about real conversations for real people dealing with real stuff and um, I think that in general we can all agree that everyone would ultimately like to be happier be happier um, so as you guys come in again feel free to invite some folks into the conversation my name is Marcy Batiste your ultimate power coach helping you restore harmony in your life relationships and businesses and a huge part of that for those of you who work with me my clients know um, probably better than anybody I am um, sold out to my happiness that's all right my lighting is terrible in here um, probably should go back to where I usually sit but anyway so you all know I'm sold out to my happiness um, and I was talking to one of my clients earlier today um, I think she was my uh, maybe second call of the day and she asked me she said so Marcy, I know you say that you are sold out to your happiness. What does that mean exactly? And I love the question because it brought to mind that pro there's probably a lot of people who are curious about that, but have just never asked the question, like, what does that really mean exactly? And I cannot, I have a big shadow on my face. Um, what does that mean exactly? And so I wanted to share with you guys and pose the question because I know a lot of you have contacted me or other people have contacted me and asked similar questions about um, just the sold out part because I'm like I'm sold out to my happiness and I share oftentimes that my happiness is my beacon that's my guiding light my true north my north star whatever you want to call it that is the thing that moves me that's that's like it's like it's like the road map like when you do you download maps on your phone right and you start off on a journey let's say you're taking a drive to go on vacation and you know where you want to end up but you just don't really know how to get there so my happiness is that destination spot so it's always just outside of my reach like I'm not ever completely 100% um, happy as in euphoria right nobody lives in a euphoria so I don't want anyone to think that I have this unrealistic expectation of what my life should look like so what I said to her was I said you know I said for me happiness is harmony happiness is peace happiness is being able get this to live life on my own terms I get to play by my own rules so live life on Mars that's who I really am that's who in my core that's who I am and what that looks like so I gave her some examples of some things that I know for a fact make me happy things like traveling things like being at the beach things like uh, investing time with people that I really like and care about uh, I don't do superficial relationships if you know this was one of the things that would get me caught up in corporate because I uh, tend to have a mentality of, you know, I, I allow people to operate in the relationship that we have. And I respect the relationship that we have in the space that we have it. So as a corporate colleague, I wasn't the person going around socializing. I wasn't the person going from cubicle to cubicle asking how everyone's weekend was. That wasn't our relationship. They were peers, they were colleagues, they were coworkers. And when then for therefore when they would come to me and they would ask, 
you know, how was my weekend? It was good. That was it. Like, and I was criticized many times for not being open enough, not being um, friendly. And I recall one, one manager I had, he actually called me into his office and he said to me, he says, you don't seem happy. And it kind of it kind of threw me for a loop because at that point I had already sold out to my happiness, so I was very happy. Uh, but I said, "Well, what do you what do you mean by that?" And he said, "Well, when you you know you don't you don't really talk to people." So, well, what do you mean? I mean, I have a great relationship with my staff. Um, my clients love me. You know, where is this coming from? What are you talking about? And he said, and I kid you not, you can't make this stuff up. He said. You don't, um, I never see you going around talking to anyone. And I kind of thought, like, I think I'm hearing you wrong. This can't possibly be what I, like, this can't be right. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And he brought up the example of not going essentially from cubicle to cubicle and not socializing with people about, or fraternizing with people about my personal life. I said, so that's what you base my level of happiness on, huh? And he was like, well, I'm just saying, like, I don't even really feel like I know you that well. And I said, well, what is what is our relationship? And he kind of looked at me, and was like, well, I'm your, I'm, not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm your superior, was the word he chose. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna let you have that, but by virtue of title alone yeah, anyway that's a whole other video so my point says so he says to me so I'm your superior I said okay so if you were going to have friends over to the house for dinner would I be invited and he really was stuck like damn he had to admit no you wouldn't be okay we're not friends that is the measure by which I engage with you is in the reality of the relationship that we have. So if we're not friends, I have no, I feel like I have no obligation to in, interact with you in that relationship, in that context. So my staff and I have great personal relationships. They have been over to my house. I have been to their homes. We've, you know, exchanged Christmas cards and gifts for the kids and, you know, all of those things. That's the relationship I have with my team. You haven't built that relationship with me as my superior, as you put it. And so I, I shared, what I did was I shared with him my first book. He went after, after our meeting and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't go, go long because he wasn't getting out of it. I, whatever he wanted out of it, I don't even really know. But his point to me was, you're not happy. My point is, how the hell do you know? Because we ain't got it like that. And so after the meeting, I talked with my mentor and I was, I was livid. I was absolutely livid. Like, how dare you question my happiness? You don't even know me like that. We don't have it like that. How dare you question my happiness? I know <laughs> my level of happiness. And honestly, I just don't like you. <laughs> Quiet as it's kept, but you know, you can't say that. And so I walked on me and I talked to my mentor and he said, what does he know about you? And I said, nothing. That's what pisses me off. Like you don't know anything about me. So how dare you judge my happiness? Like you don't know enough about me to say I'm happy or unhappy. And so we had talked through it and he said, well, what's the easiest way to let him know about you? And so I grabbed my first book Journey to Find Your Butterfly Potential. I don't even know if I got one. Here it is. I grabbed my first book. This is actually the second version. And I said to him, hey David, I said to him, I, I wrote in the front of the book, um, something to the effect of dear so-and-so, but of course I used his name, but I'll keep it out of this for the purposes of embarrassment. Dear so-and-so, um, I would like to share this book with you that I wrote about a year and a half ago. And through the pages, it is my hope 
that you will learn more about who I am as an individual and as a person. It is my hope that once you read this book, that you will understand that no matter how unhappy I may seem to you, I will never be as unhappy as I once was. So therefore, my level of happiness, you're not qualified to judge my happiness. And it was the most awkward exchange. Um, I walked out of there, I felt empowered, like, yeah, ooh, I showed him. Yes, girl, you did that thing. And I had no idea how it was gonna take it. I'm like, this is my boss at the time. And so, a few hours later, I got an email from him that said, hey, wow, I, I, I saw your book on my desk. Thank you for that. I, I didn't know you had written a book. And I said, yeah, I've actually written two at this point. I'd written, my second one was already done. And he's like, wow. And I said, so I hope you, you know, invest some time to read through it and it will give you some insight to how I think and how I operate and hopefully help you to understand that there's no one here that can make me unhappy. That my happiness comes from in here. It's not, it doesn't come from external relationships that I build with peers and colleagues. My friends know who I am, my family knows who I am. People who are intimately engaged with me know who I am and the thing, they know the things that make me happy. I share that story with you guys to say, that's how sold out I am to my happiness. That I'm so clear about it. My happiness is not a hobby. My happiness is an investment. I jeopardized a lot that day to prove the point and to send a very strong message. We never ever had to have that conversation again. But I'm so clear about what, what it makes me happy. I'm so clear about the things that make me happy that then when things come up, opportunities arise, relationships pop up, I can say, you know, no, I know that these things are important to my happiness. So for in the terms of relationships, for example, I know that communication is huge for me. It's huge for me. If you can't communicate, we're going to struggle. So I'm not going to engage in a long-term relationship with someone who's a poor communicator or one who is shut off and refuses to communicate. That's not ever going to work for me because that's not how I'm built. I don't do that. That's not who I am. So I know that about myself. Um, I know that I have to have somebody that has drive and ambition. If you're somebody who just wants to be a couch potato and just probably not going to work for me. Not that I don't mind nights cuddled up on the couch watching TV. Absolutely. I love to veg out. But I need you to understand the passion and the ambition and the motivation and the things that go into being um, being driven. You don't have to necessarily be an entrepreneur, but you have to be able to have goals and things that you um, aspire to be. If you don't have aspirations, you don't have dreams, you don't have a vision for yourself, we're gonna struggle. I've learned that about myself. Um, <laughs> David, I am a handful. People un See, David, people underestimate me. People, that's why I tell everybody, it's not as easy as it looks. I am a handful. Um, two handfuls, actually. That was four, but you know what I mean. You got the picture. So anyway, so there are certain things that I know about myself. The other thing I know is that within my next three to five years, I have a, a, a goal to live abroad for a good portion of the year, probably six to nine months. If you're somebody that can't support that, that's not ever going to work for me. And so I was sharing that story in particular with my client, and I was, I was sharing with her, a gentleman that, I had dated several years ago and then had gotten reconnected with and um, we were having some conversations and I, he kind of wanted to try and do the whole pick up where we left off thing which I don't really do do over so I pretty much knew that wasn't going to work but he had to re-meet me where I am in a new space with a new mentality and a new mindset because he knew me many years ago had a different mindset and the new me I did a post the other day about my, my old me would be intimidated by my now me. My now me, the one that he had to meet, we weren't compatible. We weren't compatible. He thought and verbalized that he felt that my dreams were 
stupid and that was the word he used well, if you think my dreams are stupid that's not ever going to work because you can't be supportive and if you use the word stupid in relation to someone else's dreams that tells me you're not a good communicator because there certainly had to have been a better choice of words that you could have used in order to communicate what you then wanted to sugarcoat as concern for my safety because then he tried to turn it around to oh well it's not safe for a woman and that like you're not even making sense just stop talking so I share the both of those stories with you guys to say that a lot of you say that you want happiness a lot of you say that you want harmony a lot of you say that you just want peace but if the things that you say you want are a hobby for you you're going to continually struggle to achieve what it is you say you want that thing that you say you want whether it's to start your business let's say it's to start your business if that's the thing that's going to inspire your happiness then that needs to be your guiding light that needs to be your go-to that needs to be your thing that you can say okay have this opportunity come up does it get me closer to my goal or does it take me farther from my goal and if it takes me farther from my goal then I have to second guess the opportunity and in some cases I have to eliminate it so like I was sharing on the relationship piece there are certain things that I know about how I am and what I need to accentuate my happiness in a relationship if though if I don't see those things and I don't hear those things in our conversation it ain't personal we just not a good fit and I'm okay with that we could be friends we could be colleagues we just can't be in a relationship you ain't got to pay to kick it <laughs> but it's not ever going to go beyond a, a, a probably rather surface level friendship until I can build trust or I can maybe understand and learn more and that sort of thing so you have to for me I know that's a sign for me that I have to slow up about my breaks don't get don't get all caught up in the hoopla and the minutia I have to take time and learn how people operate I have to teach them how to be in relation with me and I have to learn how to be in relation with them on any level but that's because happiness is an investment for me happiness is not a hobby it's not a hobby and so I can literally roll my life and my relationships and my business all under happy and so when I talk to you guys about being the ultimate power coach restoring harmony in your life relationships and your business that's why because one thing I know to be true is that your personal foundation is gonna be the support system that you build your professional position on and so you can't say that you want something professionally and then over here your relationships and your whole life is all out of whack and your house is out of order you have to make sure everything is in order and that the scales equal out I say harmony not balance because they're never gonna be 50 50 they're never gonna be 100 100 you're always gonna have a little bit of this and a little bit of that but the thing is to make sure that it's doing this it's not doing this and then stay in there because if it stays here how you how how is that harmony? How is that happiness? How is that balance? How is that stability? It's not. So if you're if you're content with this versus demanding this, then I know that happiness and harmony is not your true north. That's not your thing. That's not the thing that you truly aspire to. Similarly to if you decide that starting the business is your thing, your true north, your north star, but you're not doing the things that you need to do. To drive the business and to thrive in it then I know that's really not the thing that's moving you something else is moving you and more often times than not what I found with my clients across the board what I found about myself when I went through my own process is that typically if I'm not doing what I say I'm gonna do in relation to in particular my business it's because something's out of order over here there's something not in alignment on a personal or relationship level and so finding out what is that thing that's out of alignment 
you know, if, if, if I'm feeling like I just don't feel happy and I feel like detached or whatever, I pretty much know life, relationship, business, something's out of alignment because when these things are in alignment, harmony exists. Happiness is there. It's real easy. It's a super easy transition. I don't have to do, it's not a whole lot of boat rocking. It's not a whole lot of crying on the couch. I did a video the other day about crying in the shower. I don't cry in the shower anymore. I don't cry in the shower anymore because I learned how to build harmony into my life, my relationships, and my business. And now I'm able to protect that space. I'm able to protect that energy. So I'm asking you, for those of you who say, oh, I just want to be happy. Do you really? Like, happiness is an inside job, but it doesn't happen by itself. You have to be intentional about your happiness. You have to be intentional about harmony. You have to be intentional about peace. You have to be intentional about life management and, and relationship management and business management. Like, all those things, if any one of them is out of order, the whole foundation is suspect. So everything you build on top of a rocky foundation is subject to crumble when you're not looking. I tell my clients all the time, life happens while you're making other plans. You have all the, you have the greatest plans laid out in the world, and then life happens. And it's going to throw you if you let it. But when you know this is what my true happiness looks like, this is what my North Star is, this is my business is the most important thing to me, then you'll operate with these other things and get them in order so that everything is in alignment and then you have you have this you don't have this or this this or this is always going to lead to um, unhappiness it's gonna lead to it, it might seem like yeah the money's coming in so woo, 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 but something else is out of order I was talking to a gentleman the other day who was talking about he wants to be married again and um but his conversation wasn't one of a man who was ready to commit to a woman on a level that would make a woman want to submit he wasn't ready to lead and that was the conversation was you know he wanted to debate it with me and i'm like this is a perfect example your inability to be able to engage in a healthy conversation when you feel like, I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong. I'm saying the caliber of woman that you say you desire to have and that you desire to be with is not going to be attracted to those behaviors. So you're going to have to change your behaviors or change your expectations. And, you know, he kind of looked at me like, and I'm thinking, if you if you can't take this level of conversation, then we can, I can't be your coach. I can't be your coach. You're not committed. I do, I do coaching for people who are committed to what they say they're committed to. So, if you, you know, don't tell me that you want this relationship, but then you're not really committed to even hearing feedback. Because we hadn't even got to criticism yet. We hadn't even got to the suggestion. This was the, are we a good fit? And after that call, I decided we're not a good fit. I don't, I can't, I'm not the coach for you. Because you want to, you want to debate if everything, if everything was everything and you didn't have any room to grow, why, why, why are you here? Why are you on my phone? And I don't say that in a bad way, but we all have to. A dentist needs a dentist. A coach needs a coach. You say you, you're struggling in the relationship area. You contact me for relationship coaching, and then I tell you these might be some of the reasons, but we would need to take a deeper dive, and you want to debate about it? Okay, well, we can have this discussion for a little bit. But I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to fight you for your limitations. If you want to keep your limiting beliefs, keep them. But you're not going to get the relationship you say you want. So then that makes me question, are you really committed to what you say you're committed to? Probably not. So I'm not the coach for you. Coaching for the committed. That's what I do. So anyway, that's the message today, guys. Um, you know, when you, if you feel like things are out of alignment, you're not sensing the harmony, you're not sensing that, um, you're getting the results that you're wanting, take a look. Like, is the thing you say is the most important thing? Are you making that the most important thing? For me, that's happiness. So I can always measure that. If it's for you, it's your business, is it really? 
If you say it's a relationship, is it really? And if it's not, then you have to be willing to take a, 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 an objective viewpoint. It doesn't have to be mine. It can be yours if you can step outside your box long enough to see you for who you are. That was a toughest. That was a tough lesson for me when I went through my healing, was being able to look at myself for who I really was, and identify my shortcomings and know, like, mm -mm -mm, girl from boo boo, you got some work to do, mama. You're the common denominator between your problems. And it started, started with my mindset. It started how I think. It started how I think about things. It started about how I think about people. So take a look at yourself and, and ask yourself, is the thing that I say I'm committed to, am I really committed? Is my happiness a hobby? Or is it my main thing? If it's not your main thing, that's okay. It doesn't have to be. But then identify what is your main thing. Because you're operating in a way that you are committed to something. My mentor, Dr. Will, he always says, you're 100% committed. It's a question of what, what are you committed to? And that's what I ask. What are, you, what are you really committed to? That's the question. Are you committed to your happiness? Are you sold out to your happiness? All right. That's it for today, guys. Hope this, um, hope I dropped a nugget or two that helped you. If you have questions about coaching, if you have questions about selling out to your happiness, I would be happy to answer you. Otherwise, I'm going to let y'all go. Thank you for being part of the Ultimate Power Team. Thank you for living life on Mars with me and being sold out to your happiness. If that's what you say you're, if that's what you say you're doing. All right. Talk to you guys later. I'm out of here.